Hey guys, Loftingerfer here as always, or you might want to call me the Unta Angreifa for this video. And I'm sure somebody is gonna make fun of my German pronunciation. I can't stop, I, I just have to say it. Uh, but we're not flying today, we're not lufting, but we're gonna be submerging, we're gonna be Unta under the sea instead. <laughs> we're playing Silent Hunter 5, the latest release of the series excluding the Silent Hunter Online. And all you really need to know about this game is that it's a pretty hardcore submarine simulator, in this case the famous U-boat of the German Kriegsmarine. But as you know, simulation game sacrifices certain aspect to recreate realism, sometimes causing lengthy, tedious and boring gameplay. So this is my attempt to shorten things up so you, the viewer, don't need to see me sail towards the Atlantic, instead we'll be exposed with more action and epic scenes. Let's just call it the patrol log and hopefully it's going to be action packed. Kleine so after finishing the first patrol aka the tutorial, we were ordered to relocate at Lorient which is in western French coast and we were immediately told to go for another patrol as soon as the resupply finishes. It's the end of July 1940, often referred as the happy time for the U-boat crew. Merchant ships heading towards England through the Atlantic is increasing every day and month. And we are headed for an area called the Atlantic Air Gap, where a U-boat could operate without being bothered by enemy aircraft. Early morning of the 30th of July, we prepared for the mission and leave the dock at Lorient towards our assigned grid. Before we get into any action, let's just briefly talk about our boat. This is the Type 7B built from 1938 to 1940. And while small compared to other nations of marine, I believe it's only around 60 meters, it was still capable of reaching the Atlantic with moderate firepower. Back in Silent Hunter 3 and 4, you could purchase and use different types of submarine throughout the war, but unfortunately with this one, you can only control the Type 7, and Type 2 once modded. But it does have some wonderful interior, which might not be important for hardcore simmers, but at least for me, I really really like these eye candy features to get the extra immersion. We have the officer's compartment, a cook preparing for today's lunch, a diesel engine room, aft torpedo, and heading back front, some important equipments like the radio, hydrophone, some more space for the crew, and finally the four front facing torpedo tubes. These guys will actually speak, move and do what I tell them to do, and certainly helps build the immersion factor of the game. Now, we just wait and hope for some prey to come by. As I said in the beginning, it takes time just to reach the assigned area, but sometimes we do see some lone merchant ships crossing around the area we're currently in. It's 31st of the July now, and another term you want to get familiar with is the our beloved BDU. So every now and then you receive a radio message from various participants, it could be friendly, SOS broadcasted to open frequency, hostile messages being intercepted, but the ones you get from BDU, who are basically our boss, is the most important. So here's an example of radio message sent from the BDU at around 2am, and it's telling us that Britain is no longer sending ships through Straits of Dover or the Northern Sea. And if you think about it, it makes sense when compared to what happened in real life. Battle of Britain and the Luftwaffe's aerial offensive started from mid-July this year, so Churchill probably didn't want any more of his ships lost around that area. It's a good news for us, maybe we'll see more ships traveling the Atlantic Merchant Line instead. So it seems like one of our watchmen in the conning tower spotted some smoke on the horizon, bearing 290. And there they are. It's same 31st of July, 8.20 in the morning, and we have couple options to deal with this kind of situation. We don't know whether they are friendly or foe, merchant or worship until we have clear visual on them, 
so it'll be safest to stay away from their course and observe them as they pass. We can use our recently upgraded hydrophone to guesstimate their course. I position the boat at periscope depth well away from their visual range and cut down the diesel engine. With the anti-submarine equipment they had during this period of war, we should be pretty much invisible. Diesel machine stop. Auf e machine umschalten. Hauptballasttank fluten. Untertriebszelle fluten. Bugtiefenruder. Yeah, they look like British destroyers to me. I might have set up a quick attack if there were any large warships like the carrier or the battleships, but there seems to be only DDs, so let's just let them pass. The hydrophone is now picking up sounds from bearing 120, which were originally coming from 290, so the enemy destroyer group has passed us and we should be safe to return to our course. Later that day, during night, we spot something again in the horizon. Now, merchant or not, commencing attack during night is a huge, huge advantage of our side. It becomes even harder for the enemy to spot our low silhouette under dark. Not to mention our torpedoes will be less visible, giving our targets less time to respond. The only issue I have is that YouTube doesn't like dark videos, period. When YouTube see dark videos, they think it's a good idea to make things even darker, so the only thing viewers will see are some stars. So I will tweak with the brightness, contrast, as well as the gamma level during editing, but keep in mind that what you're seeing on screen right now is probably slightly different to what I saw while playing. So, submarine uses torpedoes to attack ships, that's uh, common sense, however not many people understand that there needs to be a lot of calculation done in order to mark a hit. In case of Silent Hunter, you can tweak that process to either make things super arcadey or extremely hardcore. In my case, I have contacts showing up on the map, but I still need to draw some lines and do some math to make things exciting. It seems like we're seeing two merchant ships without any escorts, so let's start from figuring out their course and speed. These can be easily acquired from reading how far the ship traveled during 3 minutes and 15 seconds. I plot few times and make sure I'm getting the correct readings, and seems like our target is traveling at 8 knots, an average speed for a merchant. I can also get their course and bearing from extending the line between plots and order my navigator to set up an intercept. Now, in this kind of weather and time, I really don't think submerging was necessary. We set up an ambush roughly 1000 meters away, well off their visual range. I don't think merchants were armed in 1940s, so there's no worry about return fire as well, but I went down for the periscope death anyways. We are now correctly positioned, we know her speed and course, and it's time to input rest of the data. I've decided to target the second ship in the column since she is larger. I probably would have been able to engage them both, but I wanted to play the nice captain and leave one for the rescue. My crewmen identify the target as the medium composite freighter worth 4000 tonnage. Seems about right, her angle of the bow will be plus 90 degrees when passing bearing 360, directly in front of our boat. We wiggled up and down a little bit so I adjusted the range to 1050, set torpedoes to appropriate depth, both impact detonation, and all we need to do now is wait. Forgot to mention, but they are both Greek ships, so we are clear to engage as well.
Rohr 1. Los! Rohr 2. Feiert! Rohr 1. Wird geschlossen. Langsame Fahrt voraus. Maybe two torpedoes were a bit overkill, but you know some ships can be stubborn. Estimate time of impact is roughly a minute. Kleine Fahrt voraus. Torpedo Treffer. So oh, there we go, two clean hits, each to desired location, her engine is no longer functional judging from the hydrophone, and in this weather she is going to sink for sure. I've decided to submerge and head away from the area before British destroyers come to investigate, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I would like to keep making this kind of epic U-boat action, but for now we'll head back to course headed for the Atlantic air gap, and I'll see you guys in the next one.